this week on IFBB AMA podcast. I had to figure out a way to make a 70 pound dumbbell super heavy or else I couldn't get a chest workout. It finished the whole set, zero pump, zero stimulation. People just do the exercise. Okay, bench press, incline press, this press, whatever. And they don't really feel the muscle and they keep doing it. So that's the first thing I kind of aim for. I'm gonna go as heavy as I can, but the control is the main thing. I wanna lift it like I'm Dorian Yates. You know, that precision when he's doing the incline barbell on chest day. I'm happy to fail sooner because of that. On this episode of AMA Podcast and Chris and Milos, we had James Hollingshead back on. We're catching up with James, seeing how his plans are coming along for the gym that's opening. And we discussed what makes a good gym. What does make a good bodybuilding gym? And of course, the obstacles going along with opening up a gym and entering a prep for his upcoming season. And we talked about how training changes over time as a bodybuilder, especially the more successful you become, the bigger you get. Training does have to change. And many of what built the physique may not continue to grow the physique. James is always a breath of fresh air great discussion but check it out james what is going on my man we've been on you've been on the podcast quite a few times but we got to catch up with you see what's going on in the in the in the massville over in the uk <laughs> has been uh been relatively frequent i feel like uh a very welcome, I don't know, it's not a guest, but it feels like I'm popping into a house that I'm familiar with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, dude, for sure. Yeah, it's been a little while. But a lot's been going on. It's been good. It's been good. Yeah, what has been going on? Oh, it's like Santa Milos, mostly gym developments. So uh, obviously myself and Jordan um, have uh, purchased a shitload of gym equipment <laughs> and uh, got ourselves a space and just been getting it ready really for the public and hopefully opening in January. So it's been very hands-on. Um, Jordan's kind of like the business brain, the man that's sorting out all the, you know, documentation, dealing with people. And I'm the man that likes to go in there and move things around and try and get it looking pretty. So it's been good. It's been good. I feel like I've had something other than just my bodybuilding to kind of entertain me, which is quite cool. Yeah. Well, I've seen that how excited you are getting some of the pieces of equipment. <laughs> and I know exactly what it means because I, I, I had a several gyms. I look at that. <laughs> yeah. I was like a kid there, Milos. When that, the two lorries, two Arctic lorries turned up full of prime kit, I was like... Yeah. Oh. All right. And then I, I looked at the color scheme and they, they've done it all black for us, which I've only ever seen it actually in like the all gray or the like custom like red that some people have had. When I saw it in that color, I was, I was in love. I was in love. So here's a question for both of you, because Milos, you've had a gym before, and James, you were designing and building a gym, and both of us, all of us, have been into bodybuilding. Now, would you say the best gyms are that that have a plethora of different hand-picked equipment from different companies, or do you feel that one particular company and brand can get away with doing it all and it still be a pretty good, well-rounded gym. I think I think this is a question Milos can certainly answer really I, well because he's yeah. been around. <laughs> but but it's logical. You're going to answer too. But listen, hundred percent for sure. If you endorse some of the equipment companies, then it's logical to have uh, older pieces, right? But reality of you know there is so many good pieces in different kind of companies, and I handpicked back in the day, and I was like ten different. It was. Icarian, Flex, Polaris, Hammer Strength, you know, you name it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure that uh, also when you go around and you feel some peace and you just fall in love. I, I mean, uh, I'm big on, uh, on uh, um, new tech equipment from Korea, which I, I don't know if you ever experienced, James. And when you, when you do, you're going to probably want to have like uh, several pieces of them. Yeah, but, uh, Torture Gym has a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, Torture Gym has it. Yeah, the, the, the Hedish Gym had it before Powerhouse. Uh, cool. they were the one. I, I mean, uh, Beth Francis' uh, Powerhouse is getting some. Bottom line is when you have a equipment, you don't want to just have a piece that would take space and nobody is there, nobody loves it. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those that the people are going to be in line to, to use it. And I see that some of the pieces here, <laughs> look at that face. I, I know. Yeah. What, what, what was it? The, is this Hammer? Yeah, yeah so this this is the original generation one flat hammer press, which I used at Metroflex in Plano. Uh, Ron, who owns that, a great gym, really, really good gym. And I used mm -hmm. it there. And ever since that day, I was like, I have to get that machine. 
So I've been searching for it probably for like a year and a half. And then fortunately, someone in the UK emailed um, one of my email links and said they have one in storage and he'll build it to check if it's the same one. He put it together for me, sent me some photos and it turns out it's the right one. So I was like, let me get that off you. I'll take that off you. <laughs> it's, it needs a little bit of work, a few bolts missing in like the back of the upholstery. And, but it's in the base itself is in really good nick. So get it reupholstered, get it sprayed, and it'll be good as new. But I'm so happy with that piece. So that's why I'm How excited. hard is it? How hard is it to find individual pieces? Because like I I'll put like this. In my experience, I don't have any experience, but I know Evan and Evan, you know, training at uh, Powerhouse in Montanari's brother, he, they allowed him to purchase equipment to bring to that gym. Mm. And I remember him specifically trying to find certain pieces. And he eventually found a couple pieces that he brought in there himself, like the old school pumping iron pullover machine. Um, he bought the Nebula chest supported row, the hack squat, the leg press. Um, what and was bought... the pumping iron on the pullover? Which one? Uh, you know, it's like an old pumping no, iron. Was... When I say old pumping iron pullover, it's the one that has like the dirt bike chain. It's Could brown. Be nice. Yeah, Nautilus yeah. old. Nautilus, yep. And it's, you know, you'd stretch back and there's, the seat has a seat belt. Yeah. Um, it has it's the very beat old. Cams. Yes, yes, cams. and it's actually the only one that would fit Evan because some of the current uh, pullover machines, I believe the Icarian one, the white one, he couldn't fit into it. Mm. It didn't work. But the older school, you, you had more flexibility to have more uh, freedom of movement within yeah. the machine. Um, but it's got to be difficult to find sometimes individual pieces because, right, when you're buying from a particular brand, you could call the company and be like, "I want these thirty pieces." Versus, like, I just need that one piece, right? Yeah, and Milos will probably tell you that if you want something, you're not the only one. Everyone's yeah. trying to get it. So you're basically in a queue, and I've seen so many pieces of equipment I love and reached out to the person, said, can you put this on hold for me? I'll grab it off you. They're like, it's already gone. So it's really difficult because everyone wants the gems, you know, the Nautilus pullovers, um, you know, some of the old Cybex pieces, uh, I carry Cybex like hack these, squat. Yeah, like the Cybex hack squat. If you haven't got it in your gym here, no one will go to your gym. They're like, yeah, you ain't got a good <laughs> hack squat. So <laughs> it's um, it's it's difficult because a lot of the good stuff's in like Europe as well. So if someone wants it from them who's in Europe, it's going to be easier for them to kind of negotiate versus getting it sent overseas to say myself. You're probably good in the US because again, the land mass, if you have something, you probably just got to go on a long drive and collect it and then bring it home. Living on an island, I think that actually kind of makes it more difficult. What is the square yeah. footage of your gym? Uh, 10,000. 10,000 10, square foot. So it's not it's not bad at all. 10,000 meters? Square foot. Square yeah. foot. If, I wish it was 10,000 meters. <laughs> <laughs> Fit more members in, get more money. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah, there is... Yeah, there is potential for, we have like units next door. So if ever we were in a position to extend, then the potential's there, which is cool. How many could, pieces of equipment? Uh, about 100, about 100. So it's pretty full. Holy that shit. That's that's a lot of pieces. Yeah. Lot of pieces. And, and still got a, potentially 10 pieces of um, Nautilus Nitro coming and maybe another like a life fitness uh, pec fly or something if cause I'm trying to source one at the minute. So then it'd be very, very full. And uh, that's pretty much all we can fit in there by that point until we get a mezzanine. <laughs> well, listen, uh, uh, JP came for a training camp when I did, uh, we did in Nottingham and then he came to Serbia and I'm sure he would want me to come and, and do the, training camp for you guys he would love that he would love that and we'd love that i i think you would enjoy yourself because you've got so many toys to play with you can talk yeah, to people uh, on any of the devices this is exactly how my brain works <laughs> 100 pieces holy mm, shit how many that giant sets can we get in 15 15 pieces uh a giant set <laughs> how many giant sets can well, we get in i've laid it out in a way that would work for you because things are kind of grouped so uh -huh. We can literally line up all the chest pieces and have people demolish yeah, yeah. all the shoulder pieces. So I think you'll like the setup actually. But but that uh, chest piece that you got uh, uh, laying down a horizontal um, hammer strength, uh, I, I remember seeing uh, Lee Priest back in the day doing like some crazy fucking six blades yeah. or something, right? Uh, uh, do you really uh, feel the chest? Like th this would be the number one favorite chest press for you if you have to choose? 
Uh, for me, yeah, I actually prefer the hammer over the new prime stuff personally. Yeah. Um, I used to use a lot of strive at my first gym I used to train at, which was prime prior to prime. Um, and I actually used to prefer their chest press back in the day because it just went straight. It didn't actually do this converging thing. And I know a lot of people, you know, they want their movements to converge. But I built a pretty good chest off of just flat pressing. And as you guys know, a lot of my career has been just barbell pressing straight. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of prefer the machines that don't go too like that and actually yeah. just yeah. arc. Uh, so. I like a little movement. That's it. Yeah, and I mean minimal. Like I don't mind mine coming maybe in by like a centimeter or two. But what, what, which one, James? So prime will come in slightly. So if you look at like a prime fitness chest press, yeah. Um, but like, so, which hammer strength one do you like? You like? Oh, I've actually you, got the upright. So that one, second one in looking, but it's not that. But it looks like that. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, it's an upright one, but it's got flatter back, so the back's dead flat, and it pushes dead in straight. I'm um, sending Jay Cutler a picture because he's just texting me. <laughs> <laughs> he's in Sweden. Jay's yeah, cool because so, uh, he, he's, uh, he's been responding to some of the posts and putting the thumbs up and stuff. So thank you to Jay. Uh, Chris, have you seen a um, mind-boggling chest pump of James about uh, two, three weeks ago? On his I Instagram? Had, I had a pretty Yeah, I, I reposted because I was fucking blown away. It was uh it was a fruity chest pump. Yannicka was like, you have to send that like that picture. Oh, you keep do you say it's fruity? Is that what you said? Fruity. <laughs> fruity. This one? Oh wait, I'm not sharing it. Hold on. Yeah, it, it, it was ridiculous. Before I had a shave. This one? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no, no. There's one no, before. No, no, no. Uh, keep going back. Keep going back. Few weeks ago, so not there, just not quite that. It's that not picture, job, but but it's uh in the gym, so keep going. So keep going back. It's the picture used for the thumbnail. That's up there. You go, there's a big old chest. It's, it's, it's a video of this one. Yeah, is this a video? Uh, there, there was, but I don't know if it might have been a story. I don't know, I can't remember now. Wait, Milos, you had it though, or you? I, I, had it for sure. I, I forget. Do you know what I, I take but, but so you know, many videos? Me, three three weeks means uh, you're going back like hundred posts. I know. Yeah, I, know. I post. I post like once or twice daily because of commitments. I realize I post like five or six or more. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know how you guys do it. I just, I, I'm not gonna lie, I can't stand social media. Yeah, I, 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 I can't to a certain degree. I just don't. I just like. I just want to be more in the moment of like other things i just i just don't like it it's just not for me like in other words if i'm posting and doing stuff it's because i have to i'm not enjoying any of it <laughs> the little clips of training and stuff i don't mind because if actually anything i feel like i'm in the moment when i'm doing it it sounds weird yeah because i stop for a minute and i might pose whereas if i'm not getting the camera out i actually might not pose so it's beneficial for me to practice my posing more if i know there's eyes on it so it encourages me to actually practice my posing more. Yes. So it's used yeah. as a good tool in that sense. Yeah. But, but you know, uh, let me put it this way, because I'm retired and all this shit. I wish there was a social media back in my time. I would probably post every goddamn second. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be appropriate. Yeah, I, I agree. But I, I guess, you know what, though? I will say this, Milos. I give you credit and just for you to uh, be an older gentleman and to adopt these new ways because like dude i'm stuck in the 90s i love the 90s I love the magazines i love all yeah, that i but, love but where reality people... is, there is no more magazines and now look and now, I, I mean i'm a fan of the sport i like to see what james is doing i like to see what right. you're doing i like competition you know two days out three days after yeah well the, i mean you know okay you can click you don't like it you just uh, move forward. but uh, there's always some interest i i love this this stuff that's why i wish that uh James post more. Somebody just posted a uh, complaint on my uh, Instagram, like, why I'm not posting more pictures of uh, James? Because I don't post <laughs> I don't that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been, do you know what? I've recorded so many sets and stuff from like an educational standpoint to try and show people like, how to perform a set, but then they never make it to my Instagram. 
you know, Isn't even like fun? training. Yeah, like training today. Like I film pretty much every set to show the ch choices of movements I do, but I haven't done well, it. Well, okay, here's the question. Why not? I don't know, really, because I feel like I don't want to flood. Because it's really weird, but I've noticed like with following, because obviously you're going to look at analytics. If I post too often, following drops. Yeah. So it's like, oh, man, where do you win? Like you kind of got to post a certain amount. And not more, because otherwise people are like, oh, I'm fucking sick of this geezer. If you're really like a popular person, like, I don't know, like a bumstead or I don't know. Yeah, you name someone in that kind of realm. I think they can post as much as they like and people love them. Like, imagine if Sam Sulek was posting every, you know, every three times a day. I bet people wouldn't mind. But us mere mortals, people grow tired of us for some reason. So I'm very careful with that. Chris Bumstead could take pictures of pizza falling on the ground. And, and, get, a, like, and get a million yeah. likes, literally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I don't. We're not quite in that realm. <laughs> yeah, but but listen, I mean, uh, uh, the, so so here is my rationale: if uh, you are catering for a bodybuilding audience and uh, fans, and you're putting a hardcore set that you just did, and if anybody is not interested to see, why would you even have them there? Who cares? Yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're not really fans. I mean, uh, they're there for what? For your for your hairy chest or, you know what I mean? They they, they are, I mean, they're there for that. Oh, there a lot of people are. <laughs> probably 50% 50, probably 50 of my following. Oh, man. Oh, man, a big, burly, white, hairy-chested guy on Instagram. Milos, oh, my God, they're all over there. Milos has hey, out. Did, did you guys check your, your uh, statistics, like woman and man? Mine's 97% men. Yeah. 97? Same. Yeah. Yeah, Same. I'm 98. <laughs> See? Because they come to your page knowing there's going to be a lot of good-looking men stripped down posing they love it it's like guys follow guys girls follow girls in general however if it's like the bachelor mm. it's gonna be 98 percent girls following that dude do you know what i mean yeah yeah you have to you be know, a certain it, person yeah yeah shit. posing can make or break when it comes to show day and if you're having trouble individualizing your posing or really getting the most out of your posing or even being consistent with your posing i highly suggest a guide that you can reference on your own posing coach might be helpful but something that you can reference to be able to fully understand how to build every pose from the ground up is going to be essential in your overall stage presentation so please check out this link below because i sure wish i had this when i first started bodybuilding what do you, yeah, do I mean, really uh, you, you per perform everything perfectly and then you perform you know heavy weights listen i i would i would uh, watch every single set you do uh, yeah. and i already i did million sets myself i train you know a million other guys so but i, I would like to see it you know because you know hmm? go ahead I agree. I agree with Milos. James, like, not because I know I'm friends with you and Milos is as well. It's like seeing somebody move heavy weight correctly with full range of motion and good technique is very, very pleasing to see. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I follow some guys who were, I'm not going to name them, who lift, in my opinion, just idiotic. And mm -hmm. I just can't look at it. I can't watch yeah. it. Like, I just, I, even if it's heavy weight, I can't watch it. It's funny because. I lift so precisely that actually some of my sets aren't heavy compared to other people's because I've, I know I'm able to make that weight do a lot. Um, you know, like there's machines even I was using today in the gym and I've done way more in the past, but was the set any less op like optimal? No, like the control I have now and the focus on actually getting it done properly is, um, is a lot higher than it's been pre previously. So I feel like I get a lot more out of it. Don't get me wrong. There's a few sets. Like if I'm doing an incline Smith for my leading press movement, I'm going to go as heavy as I can, but the control is the main thing. The first thing I want to lift it like I'm Dorian Yates in blood and guts, you know, that precision when he's doing the uh, incline barbell on chest day. So that's the first thing I kind of aim for. And if I fail sooner because of that, I'm happy to fail sooner because of that. Um, rather than, uh, 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 you know, because for me, I'm not saying that can't build muscle, but it's more likely to cause an injury that's going to put me out. So there's no point in me training like that. Um, you know, I, I kind of hurt my knee a few weeks back and that wasn't even doing anything heavy. That was just a, a freak accident. I've been able to train my legs, um, but I haven't been able to do any of this stuff that you've seen me do where it's like really heavy squats and stuff. But my leg sessions have felt very good because it's made me do what I can and make the most of what I can. So... So how, yeah. why, why was the freak accident? Nothing. It's weird. I just got a twinge in my knee going down on a rep on a light set, 
I had an MRI scan to see what it was. There's no tears. So I think I've got uh, I've got an inflamed uh, Hoffa pad. I was talking to you about this, Chris. So I had the MRI. Hoffa pad, so the fat pad is inflamed. And the tendon above my knee is slightly aggravated, but there's no damage. Uh, I think I've got some sort of nerve pinch because I'm getting like a nervy kind of feeling. I had so that too. I've got someone yeah. who's going to check that out, but I've been able to train legs and I've just changed my movements to like, um, like I do like a, I hate doing it, but I have to do, I'm doing a reverse band hack at the minute and I hate doing reverse band hack because I'm just taking off that part of the bottom to alleviate the, the exchange. And then I've been doing single leg press. Um, I still do extensions and stuff. So my leg workouts have actually been good. And uh, every time I train them, I look in the mirror and I make sure they're still there and they are still there. So no heavy squatting, <laughs> but I actually feel better for it. I kind of like when I get into kind of prep mind, trying to eliminate using too much um, assistance so like straps and stuff. Like I have to use them on the heavy, heavy sets, but I do try to limit the use so I get a little bit more contraction quality because I do feel like I feel the muscle more without them than with them. So I'm just trying to be smart, really. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, uh, I'm sure, Chris, you did that uh, as well because you said before you train your legs like an asshole. Uh, I, I did uh, always super heavy squats. And then, of yeah. course, you wrap it. And uh, you wrap at least the last three heavy sets, right? For sure. And, le le and then you go to the hack squat and you do the same thing. And there is, of course, you don't feel as much but you are safe, right? Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, are you really safe? This is, uh, I wrapped my uh, my uh, knee when uh, 2002, uh, uh, my quadriceps blow up. And I was like, just like, like a rubber, you know, rolled up like, oh mm. shit. I know so, that's the yeah. thing. It's like, ooh, yeah, like... but, but your legs are going nowhere because uh, uh, I've seen your legs, your legs are phenomenal. But then again, when I think back, uh, I think I mentioned, I would think I would never lose my legs. You know, when yeah. you feel, yeah. oh, hell yeah, you know, medialis, lateralis, thickness. Mm. Shit, my legs are like a flamingo. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I've got that to like... come. That, that's, that'll be in, you know, a few years' time. Hold on but you know, it's funny about that. A couple of things. Um, one, James, I had very similar nerve pain, too, to my left knee mm -hmm. when I damaged the chondromalacia, the yeah. cartilage underneath I've the I've got slight chondromalacia in my left knee. Yeah, I yeah. would get that. I would go to bend my knee, like getting out of the car, and I'd be like, ah, what the hell? Yeah. Kind of like that nerve pain would kind of stab. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm assuming it's feeling better now, uh, James? Yeah, mate, some days, like, I don't feel it at all. And then yeah. uh, maybe because it's getting cold now. You know, it's like I said, Milos, it's like three degrees here at the warmest in the day, and that's Celsius. Um, so the bones just feel a bit more, oh. So I just make sure I warm up more, so go in the gym and I do like five, six minutes on the bike before I even start on the leg day just to get the knee feeling ready. And I used to do that when I was younger and then I got a little bit older and thought I don't need to. And now I'm realizing you do need to. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's gone full circle. You know, you know I think it's crazy, uh, Milo, so you said about like, you know, you never thought your legs would go away, but now there are flamingos. Oh, I remember in my 20s, you know, getting up to a Tall, heavy body weight for me, 250. My legs were really big when I was an amateur. They're actually bigger as an amateur they were when I was a professional because I didn't have any knee injuries. And I remember not training legs at all for like eight weeks. Not at all. And then I go into the gym one day to squat, and I could easily squat four or five for greater than 12 reps with ease. Mm -hmm. And my legs never shrunk. And then all of a sudden you fast forward to like 35, and mm -hmm. I get a knee injury, and I can't really train legs for like a month, and my legs just shrink right down. Yeah. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like when you get older, like you don't move it, you don't use it, you fucking lose it real quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that something that you found, Milos? Like, was there a certain hundred percent? You know, uh, I mentioned this before when my father told me, "Hey, listen, hot shot. Wait until you're forty, and especially 50. And <laughs> and I really, really was bothered by like, what's going to happen? I'm going to keep training and all this stuff. You're just building up. It's good. you know, there's no reason to deteriorate. Everybody, as you know. All the, the uh, retired pro bodybuilders, first thing they lose is legs. Mm. You know? uh, look yeah. at the master's division, right? Who has legs? And it pisses me off, right? Because, uh, okay, before, uh, and you said something very, it's like a t-shirt, fail sooner. I like that. You know, because if you, if you do the same thing, perfect form, perfect range of motion, perfect contraction, and you make yourself, you know, burn to the point that you have to fail sooner, 
you stimulate it perfectly. Mm -hmm. So before I felt this on the legs, I could swear it's just like a stabbing pain and you're turning and it's like, oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> the pain distributes to the joints. Yeah, the knee goes, oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's like nobody wants to handle that. So you, you, you fail, you know, in, in the wrong spot. But, but that, that's why, I mean, when you said like you wrap your knees, that still tells me that you probably still go crazy. Uh, maybe maybe it's the time that you should consider, right? Wraps, uh, wrapping knee is not allowed because it's uh, exposing to a danger. Yeah, I, no, I, that's what I said. I've stopped. I've actually stopped wrapping my knees so I don't go yeah. so heavy. Yeah, yeah. Because I tell you, I, I blew up my quad, you know, uh, wrapped. So yeah. Yeah. it made no difference. Well, you know, you know Ronnie Coleman, and I wonder because I've never asked this question, but Ronnie, one of his quads on the outside looked like it had a little bit of an injury and he used to wrap. And I... I wonder if anyone's privy to if he had a, a slight tear on one of his quads. Anyone know? Uh, no, uh -huh. Nothing. Yeah, because it's literally like on, the, I think, the left leg. It's like you see the the lateral head is slightly lifted. Like, you it's, mean towards the end of his career? Yeah, like maybe 2004, like four, five, and six. So, oh, really? Yeah, I just noticed it a little bit. Just a little bit. I wonder if that just happens to everybody, like the muscle starts to... Because I've noticed it in people's arms, like triceps and stuff. They can almost ride up slowly, you know? Have you noticed that? Yeah. yeah. I've got like older friends that compete in the Masters and stuff, and their triceps and biceps length almost <laughs> creeps away. It raises, away. <laughs> mm. it raises up, yeah. Uh, interesting, I didn't notice this about uh, Ronnie. I, I noticed his lat, right? Yeah. At, at that time, but but not legs. And let me tell you, I was just, I don't know if you've seen my uh, training with Ronnie pictures a few days ago. I did. I was looking at him like, fuck me, look at the size of him. Yeah, that's That was ridiculous. Uh, I thought, but pictures don't do them justice, I swear to no. God. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right here, I like on this outside? Yeah, it was that leg that I noticed a little bit. That picture, you could see it when you look at it, but it yeah. could be the angle. But I noticed it in you know. a video with him training. It was more in a video. But I noticed it. And then I always wonder with Jay, because Jay always says it, he had one leg that was bigger than the other. I wonder what that was caused by. Because um, he had his right leg wasn't as big as his left leg. Obviously, we all have, um, we're not all symmetrical. So I'm just interested if it was uh, an injury or just always that way. Because yeah, Jay would put his I... left leg forward because his left leg was the bigger leg. So if you yeah. go back to that picture, yeah. Chris... He, he uh, had to if you can find one? it, that absent thigh. So Col Coleman's left quad there, you can see it. Yeah, see it. look at that. And then oh, right that. here. And then on Jay, he's got like a tear in the upper quad on the right one. I can't so believe that I missed that. I noticed all these little things. And then he used to put his left leg forward because it was the dominant leg. So bodybuilding, you've got to just play play the game of put forward what's the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and, and play the game of being smart. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, let, let's be honest. You know what's really funny too that you mentioned something, James. How you're like, well, since I I got hurt, I've been having actually pretty good leg sessions because you're directing more tension to the muscle. It was really funny when I tore my pack. I think I mentioned this before on this podcast. When I injured my pack, my chest grew faster the following 16 months after that chest injury yeah. because I had to figure out a way to make a 70 pound dumbbell super heavy, or else I couldn't get a chest workout. And then eventually I was able to do 80 and then 90 and then 100 mm. doing it this new technique that wise. And e form. Yeah. And then Evan one day goes, bro, what'd you do for your chest training? And I just told him what I did. And he's like, no shit. Your chest has gotten so much bigger since the injury. And yeah, it's like e the Evan, injuries. Evan, Evan was jealous because you surpassed him in the chest department. <laughs> yeah, He was always trying like to build his chest up. <laughs> but you know what it is, dude? It's like, like an injury forces you almost to make more progress because it's forcing you to train like a bodybuilder, you know? Yeah. I've yeah. done so many movements years ago where it's like, I'm literally bypassing what I'm trying to train. Yeah. <laughs> and we've all done it, you know, like shoulder oh. pressing, but like just so aggressive with it that your shoulders don't really get any of the stimulus. It's almost like your just entire body does. And yeah. I don't know, bodybuilding, you have to, to be a good bodybuilder, I feel like you have to accept that the ego has to go out the door. Um, not saying you can't be incredibly strong because obviously if you develop strength from the position of, re, you know, remapping your technique, you can still become very strong. But just yeah. having the patience to get strong rather than yep. rushing it. 
Yeah. Because yeah. I used to rush it. I used to like pull all the weights off the floor or row and look like I'm doing like like a dog shitting or, you know, all those kind did, of things. Did I ever tell you guys a story where I met David Henry and I thought he was such a dick because I kept asking him, hey, man, what do you do for your back? And he's explaining crazy. to he's explaining to me. He's got a crazy back. Yeah. He's explaining to you what he does for his back. And then I go, well, I don't understand because I'm not getting out of it. My back's not changing. And he's like, Dave's like, dude, you have to train like this. He's explained to me. And he's explained to me kind of like what we all talk about. Drive the tension to the muscle. Pull with your back. Making sure you're you know, not using your arms and positioning yourself this way. And I thought he was just giving me the runaround. I'm like, this dude's a dick. And I'm like, I'm doing the same thing you're doing, but it's not having the same result. And Dave looks at me and he goes, kid, you don't get it. He goes, the difference between me and you is I know how to train my body and you don't know how to train yours at all. Yeah. And I'm like, as I walk away, I'm like, I was a young kid. I'm like, this guy's a dick. Like, talk to somebody else. <laughs> and then you, know, you realize it's the 202 first Mr. Olympia won numerous pro shows. His, um, his back was always mind boggling. Yeah. 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 And I, I saw him train my gym and, and that when that back gets pumped, it is just ridiculous. <laughs> but, but you know, yeah, that's that picture. Yeah, you, you showed the right yeah. one. I mean, when you see that chest, right? You don't have to quite uh, does this guy feel you can guarantee that he feels every fucking rep of every fucking set for for, for chest, right? Literally. And I have this with, with many guys, right? Uh, Chris, uh, you're coaching somebody, and I'm sure even uh, uh, James, right? And you're watching the guy, and you could see that he's not pushing through the chest. Yeah. You try to correct it, and it's still, I don't know, it just doesn't click. So maybe what David Henry was telling you about pull from the back, and you feel it, right? You just didn't have that click, and you didn't really feel mm. pulling it. Yeah. I just the concept, like when he was explaining to me, the concept didn't make sense to me because I'm like, wait a minute. I'm doing the same exercise as you. Mm -hmm. I'm moving full range of motion. I'm coming back. I'm doing exactly what you're doing, but I'm not. That's yeah. the difference. Because there is, on the outside, watching someone do an exercise doesn't determine what's going on internally with the contraction. Like, yeah. you know, if he's firing from his back initially, you can't see that when he's training. Right. Whereas, you know, you might be firing through your your bicep or your, uh, I don't know, even your forearm. But it doesn't show because ultimately everything is going to contract, but it's to what degree. He's obviously able to put the majority of emphasis onto his back, whereas your majority of your emphasis at the time was sharing between those other muscle groups that contribute. So it's been able to like almost disengage the, the non-important muscles and only use them the amount they need to be used versus what you're trying to do is it's it's weird because this is something that comes over time and when everyone goes on about muscle mind connection that is kind of muscle mind connection that explanation of how to distribute the amount of tension required perfectly through the muscles that you're trying to actually specifically target which is just a very conscious thing to do you have to take time you can't rush that again like you can't take rush to get strong you can't rush to get muscle mind connection yeah. my, my muscle connection I'm going to I'm going to add to that because you use the okay you're pulling movement but you can use the back or you can use the mm -hmm. biceps or forearms and shit like that. so let's use the same muscle yesterday at the torture gym I was uh, coaching a couple of guys and I showed them that hack squat and hack squat so it's uh, you you're just pushing the hack squat but now you can put the whole foot down okay or you can raise the heel if you raise the heel you can push from the ball of the foot or you can put the down and push from the uh, here, but you can connect with the with the different parts of the quad. Yeah, I, I can uh, keep the foot down, and you can watch me do the ten reps. But first five, I was doing all with the quads, and the other five that to look the same for you. With the James was saying internally, mm -hmm. you know, externally you don't see it, but internally I can feel it. You know, where where do I put which uh, fibers do I engage? And that, that's the kind of thing. So you were saying about uh, other movements fail sooner. So, you know, this is where is the trick. And like you said, it comes with years. But I don't know why people just do the exercise. Okay, bench press, incline press, this press, whatever. And they don't really feel the muscle. And they keep doing it. You know, they finish the whole set, zero pump, 
Zero yeah. simulation. Yeah. <laughs> Just... They're missing out on what Arnold used to rave about, you know, the mm -hmm. pump. And the pump comes from the accuracy. You know, when you're doing um like when you're doing a hack squat, I always think of how I perform a leg extension. And on the way down, I think of the reverse leg extension. So I think I'm going to descend into the hole, but I'm contracting my quads on the way enough that the tempo on the way down is slow and controlled. And then when I'm coming out, instead of just pressing, I'm actually trying to leg extend, but push my back into the pad and extend out the hole. So my whole quadricep is like firing from top to bottom yeah. the entire way through. And that way, like you say, you could have, you could have like, three plates to side on a, on a hack squat yeah, and absolutely right. destroy yourself in 10 reps Yeah. versus obviously if you're just trying to press away from here to up there, yeah. which will incorporate all sorts, glutes, hams, uh, adductors, it still build legs, but if you're trying to be specific, it's not going to do what you want it to do. And you're going to be able to lift a lot more, but you're not going to be able to in, inherit that accuracy that if you're someone that's maybe let's say your quads need actually to improve, you need to be able to specifically target that with that kind of training um it's weird i love that feeling like i chase that when i'm training every set that i do i'm like i shuffle around and feel around until i get what i want out of even even the practice sets you know like the way up once i've got that like locked in and i'm like yeah i always say like it's putting the tracer bullet in and then every other bullet there will hit the mark so you've got to make sure you get that tracer bullet in which is that engagement firing once that's in firing increase the load and then carry through that that same format and you'll get a lot out of it it's all those cues, Sorry, right <laughs> it's, it's all those little cues like you ever hear that, that calf cue where instead of in a calf raise pushing through your toes try to touch your heel to your calf yeah yeah in your mind touching your heel to your calf you tend to feel it differently than if you just push through your toe it's, it's like true. all cues you know that whatever works to make that connection but i will tell you this dude Years I was training like a Milos, I told you Milos before, like an asshole. Um, and it didn't sink in until I realized what I was doing wasn't working. So I'm like, I got to change my approach. And I started changing my approach, but I really didn't really gain that mind muscle connection to a degree I would say, or I'd be proud of until I actively really wanted to. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I've heard about it. I heard about it. I heard about it. But until one day I was like, all right, enough is enough. I'm adjusting the weight and the reps. And the rep, in the in the attention, in the um, in the speed of the rep, just based on what it feels. And once I did that, then it was just like, like this. Mm. Then I could feel it, and understand it. I feel like a lot of people because they can't, they can't see it. You know, they can't write it down. It's not a program you can write down and follow. Mm. It's a concept. They have trouble adopting that concept. Not to mention a lot of fragile egos in bodybuilding where they're going to have to go well, lighter and they don't want to be seen going it, lighter. Chris, isn't it? It's, it's weighing up. What do you need versus what do you want to show? Right. <laughs> like what you need yeah. is never really what you want to show. A lot of yeah, time. Well, yeah. Of course, but you know, it's a kind of humbling experience too. The other day, like a month ago, I went to the gym and said, okay, I'm going to destroy the legs. And there were two ladies doing a hex squats, right? Which I, which I, <laughs> made a mistake of, you know, asking if I can work in, didn't expect <laughs> one girl that's going to just blew me out of the water. Like I could go up to like four plates and she had five plates and six plates and six and a half plates. Like, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. To be fair, it'd be hard. It'd be hard pressed oh, almost to go so. to a gym now where the women they were don't out-squat the man. They were young. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Ah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I had to pull... One of my thousand excuses, and, and I said, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, car accident, you know. That, that We're still crazy. proud of you for even doing legs. You know, at your age, I probably won't even be doing legs at all. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, as I'm talking to Jay, I sent a picture of, of us being on a podcast. I said, oh, yeah, podcast. Jay trained twice a day, right? And I said, like, oh, God damn, man. What are you trying to be, Mr. Olympia, right? <laughs> yeah. You know? So, so Jay says, listen, man, I absolutely love it. He, he has a, there was a full day of work and it's like eight o'clock at night. And the last thing that you think he's going to go into the gym, he comes to the gym. Yeah, it does he legs. just absolutely love it. You know, so yeah, you got to be like this uh, to achieve uh, what he did. And, and that's why, I mean, Chris, I'm trying to over-motivate uh, uh, James because uh, I know that you are opening the gym, and I'm going to tell you this. It's a big danger because 
1999 was my most successful year. I competed in every show. But 99 is the time I bought my gym. And of course, now you are in two directions, okay? Making the gym and then the training. It says, okay, you know, I'm going to focus here, but I'm going to still train. Well, my training was never at the same uh, intensity because now you have worries about this, you're there, they kind of... So you're going to have to, of course, uh, first isolate that pro bodybuilder I'm going to compete and I have to do everything here and that's priority. And then gym, I mean, you're going to distribute 22 uh, hours a day. I mean, of course, you can sleep. So uh, whatever you're not training, you put it there. But that training has to be priority. So I'm an evening guy. I can't train in the morning, you know, shit. You know, so yeah. I would always wait for the evening. But every time if I waited for the evening, you know, I'm so goddamn tired and there's so many, many problems. Ah, uh, yeah, I can skip the day and skip the week and then skip the shit. So I don't know if you have already plan in January when you guys open a gym, which is around a corner. Mm. Uh, are you gonna train first thing in the morning, or uh, you know? I'm kind of, I'm kind of like a, I, I, I like to do something in the morning, like work based, and then go train in the earlyish afternoon, and then by the time I finish training, I come home when a normal work day would finish, mm -hmm. and then that's kind of how I like my day. So it's fifty fifty. I do something in the morning to feel a bit productive, and then I train and feel super productive, and then I return home and I chill the fuck out for the evening that's yeah. kind of my setup i like evening training i do like it but it's like you say waiting for it to come for me by the time it's there unless i've been genuinely busy i lose my brain because i'm itching to get in the gym so unless the day is actually occupying me with things to do it's very hard for me to wait till the evening so yeah by one one o'clock i'm like yeah man i'm ready to go lift some heavy shit i'm warmed up my knees and everything are good because i've moved for a few hours you know, done my cardio, eaten a few meals, and I'm ready to rock. So I think I'll stick with that time, which mm -hmm. it might be a busy time when the gym's open. I don't know. But I always have the option of training um, at Kojo's as well, which is our Jordan's private place. So, you know, we'll just see how it, you know, it fares. And if it's too busy sometimes, mm -hmm. then I'll just get back in the car, drive another 20 minutes up the road and go do a private one. Yeah, That's going to be handy. Really it's handy to have both because there are certain days where you're just like, I don't want to be around anybody. And in other days, yeah. I like to be around people and feed off of their energy. So yeah. um, I'll play like, it by you. Like when you're four weeks out and you just want to be bothered, it's like, that's the place to go. Mate, last year. So, you know, last year I was coming down here and training four days and then going home for three days. And I really enjoyed it. I, my best sessions were down here. So I had a good time doing that. And I... I I know that I know the equipment. I've built a relationship with that equipment. I use it in a manner that feels very productive. So therefore, um, that's a box ticked for me. I have a relationship with the equipment. It's the first time I hear this. Yeah. <laughs> this it's true good. because equipment, you put me in a gym that I've not been in and I get on like a, a chest press and I haven't used it before. It's like starting again. It's like, man, I don't even have yeah. anything to, like I have not any previous experience with this piece. So therefore, I've got a, go through the first date, the second date, you know, we got to get formal first and I don't even know how to really feel it. So I like to use the same equipment over and over again. That's why, you know, with the gym, we've bought all the equipment that we have in the private place for the, the public gym and pieces that I've used previously that I love, uh, like the hammer, hammer strength, uh, chest press and whatnot. These are all pieces that when I've used them, I've been blown away by how much quality I get out of the contraction and basically just, the fucking pump I get from any of those pieces. Yeah. So, hey, pieces is, uh, uh, kids dream. Is, is Jordan training just as heavy as always? Jordan's hard to get out of that man. Like he loves his shit. Like I kind of he's done the odd session of me, and then he'll scale back a bit and he'll be like, "Yeah, let's put my bodybuilding head on." But when he goes off and does his own thing, he does like to go as low as like three repetitions on some things, which. I can't, I avoid, I haven't done that for years. So Jordan's Jordan. He's a hard, you know, can you teach an old dog new tricks is the question. Yeah. I don't think you can. <laughs> he loves it. He lives, but he lives for that moment. And when he's in the gym and he does that set that gives him that exhilaration, that's makes his day. And I get it because the rest of the day is all business. 
you know, he runs a supplement company that's very successful over here. Um, you know, he has a website that has a lot of informative stuff on there. So I think it's just his way of just coping. Yeah, you got to love you him. Know? But, you know, you know, it's just like another injury waiting to happen. I mean, oh, like, allowed. for sure, for sure. And he and we we laugh about it. I'm like, dude, like, you, you know, if how hard can you keep pushing? But I do think lately, because I've seen him train for a few weeks, I do think he has incorporated a little bit more of a bodybuilding type training because he's actually dieting some weight off at the minute. So mm. I think he's being smarter because he's obviously not as robust, um, which is good. And you that you guy... know, we should get him on here sometime, guys, to come and have a chat because then you can ask him these questions yourself and he'd love yeah, to have a catch up. You should, I'm pretty, absolutely, sure. Man. I'm pretty yeah. sure he would. Yeah, Chris, yeah, let's let's do that. Uh, maybe you can be... Can, can you put put four people at once? Oh, or? yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask John if he'd like to come on. I'm Shit, sure yeah. at, he doesn't normally with anyone, but he loves you and yeah. he's my mate, so he has to do what I fucking say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. I, love I it. think yeah, people would like it. People would really him. enjoy it. Definitely did ask him, check his interest. Yeah. Did, sure. did you see that guy that uh, looks just like him in that most muscular pose? They, they, they yeah, posting. they posted um, the guy with the shoulders, crazy physique. Um, yeah. I follow him on Instagram because I think he's very, very good. Um, a bit more, you know, back and he's going to be, a, you know, lights yeah. out. What's his name? I don't know, um, but uh, yeah, I forgot. I'll find it. I'll find it for you because he is really The doubts, you cannot goddamn believe it. But is then this the amateur guy? Yeah, yeah it's VOJ guy. on Instagram. V-O-J-T-A, I believe. T-R-N. So, V-O-G-T-A. V-O-J. T-A. Delts are just, they're the best shoulders I've ever come across in my life. Probably, opinion. yeah. Probably, yeah. Hard, straighted, veiny, thin skin. Yeah. They're not even yeah. full of gear because the, the detail in them is yeah. incredible. That guy's an amateur. That's freaking yeah. crazy. Well, he's a pro now, though, right? No, no. He missed out his pro card to Rubiel. So Rubiel is the, the big oh, neck zilla. God. They hey. were both what, in the same pro what, qualifier. What are the chances someone like that shows up to compete I against know. somebody like this? Look at those fucking shoulders, boys. That, that, that doesn't even look real. you know. Jesus it, it looks God. photoshopped, and it's not. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Look at those arms to go arms, with it. Arms, quads, calves yeah. are good. He's literally just lacking some back thickness if you turn him around and a bit more chest. Bit more chest and back, like sky's the limit. So, so obviously, a lack of chest is probably due to engagement Shoulders. of adults, right? Yeah, he's that guy. He's that guy that was yeah. pressing. <laughs> is he police officer? I don't know. What it do looks like <laughs> there was a look at that picture up, 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 no, no, up, up to the right. Oh, maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's another Ronnie Coleman in the house. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah. he's got yeah, very impressive on. limbs, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, get, get pulled over by that guy. You start giving him shit. Nope, never mind. Get back in the car. You know what? I had uh, Ronnie Coleman's police uniform, the black one with the Arlington, Texas, all this shit. He yeah. gave it to me back in the day. But then when I when I went back to Europe, you know, uh, my wife, I guess, didn't save it. Oh, oh man, that would have been a killer piece to have. I would have put yeah, that. Yeah, like, you know, framed. I yeah. Mean, so Shit. Um, James, before we close up, are you uh, still going to hit up the UK, Arnold? Is that still the plan? Yeah, that's the plan. Like I said, yeah. I, spoke, I said, spent the minutes the other day. I said, sorry, I'm a bit like all over the gaff because of the gym, but I've been doing everything I'm meant to do, so nothing's fallen off, and that's why I'm still able to do updates because I'm. I haven't fallen off the wagon, so uh, I do plan on doing it. I plan on doing the US as well, and who knows, potentially, if Brazil wants some and and fucking uh, Fuad show the Detroit, you know, that, that March-April window is kind of the window that I'm Perfect. content with. Yeah. Because the UK, Arnold, is two weeks two after? Two weeks after the, the Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, Ohio is always first weekend of March. Yeah. It's yeah. always, yeah. The second, cold, I believe. Cold as hell. Yeah, as I told Ohio, you, America. James, I mean, it's great, great opportunity, I think. I, I think you had just enough rest, made just enough improvements, and then uh, polish everything with a little bit of this, uh, additional size. Uh, it's a must. I, I know that, uh, you know, you can't be half in, half out. No, you know, no, no, for sure. Yeah, you for have sure. To and I'm never, I'm never, I'm that person that I've never not done a show I've committed to. Never. I get up, 
regardless and I do it and I make sure I do it well. So it's just um, a very different, I think I'm anticipating the gym, like say having that as an available place for me to prepare for those last couple of months in a good way. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, you know, 34 years old and finally got a business that's kind of setting up for the next bit. So it does require attention, like you say, but I don't feel like it's a draw from what you do. Cause I think when you're a bodybuilder and you're a serious one, no matter what life throws at you, you train like this is not, not morbid, but like, you know, I lost my mother a couple of years ago, maybe longer cause time flies by it. And I remember very specifically, you know, my mum passed away, you know, they, they, they come to obviously get the deceased. I went to the gym straight away, straight away, trained back for two hours and did what I do. Cause that's me. And I'll always do that. So, you know, the bodybuilding is, is when you're a bodybuilder, you guys are the same. It's just in your blood. And no matter what life throws at you, you get it fucking done. So. Yeah. I try, I, I try to convince myself I'm going to get out of it when I left the States and went to Serbia and I say, hey, no, you can't. Just, just it, 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 man. It's in the blood, you know, it's going to always be there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, 34 years old, that's absolute prime. Yeah. I'm, I'm serious. That's, that's, you know, now, now and next uh, four or five, six years. Yeah. Yeah, that's your absolute prime. So yeah, yeah. I, I like the idea like, of all three Arnolds. Yeah, yeah. I think it's worth doing. Um, you know, when I was in Sweden, I spoke to obviously Branch is one of the guys at Gasp, and I've always been able to ask him his advice and whatnot. And he was the one that was really like, "Yeah, man, hell yeah, fucking go for it, like kick ass." Like he kind of convinced me probably a year ago, really, to do the show. So got good people around and people that have kind of encouraging like yourselves and friends that are here so i feel like it's about time you know i've been a pro since 2017 i haven't done an arnold so if i get the uh if my application's accepted then i think it's no, the right time never did a us arnold you only did the uk nope. nope just did the uk last year and it was like say it was it was a good dip my feet in the water and i enjoyed it and i feel like it was a good look so yeah. confidence is in a that's the one with... where they criticize him i criticize yeah. him. but yeah. you know what milos milos it's not the first time because through these streams, I remember when I won the Europa Pro. Yeah. Giles Thomas did the same on the video. And then, because the video for that was really shit, the live footage. And then pictures started coming out. Yeah. And he, yeah. And he was like, oh shit. Because I beat Rafa. I beat um, Lucas Osladil, um, Mark Hector, Samson, you name it. Like Regan, everybody at that show, which I didn't expect to do, but I did. And yeah, like from the live video, I looked like I was in like sixth place. But then from the, you know, the actual pictures and that, people are like, oh, shit, yeah, it was a good win. Um, so, you know, I know what it's like. It's hard to kind of judge shows. We do it for like a little bit of a living, you know, with the podcast and the stuff. It's always difficult to really know. You can only do what you're, you can only work with what you're working with, can't you? Listen, there was a night and day difference. And uh, I think yeah. Chris I said it. I criticized uh, James, like I, I didn't see it. And then Jake Cutler and Manager Matt that came and said, no, 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 no. We were there. We watched it. He looked fucking crazy, and then uh, you know, look at the the, the 4K. 4K footage yeah. or whatever, 8K, whatever they have. Like, it's, it's a different person. He looks like uh, two months difference. Yeah, you know, it was. Like, I think I, I I I had very good. I was very good from the posterior, mm-hmm. like me analysis and analyzing it myself. Good from the posterior, um, decent from the side. Obviously, front needs to improve. So you can see why someone like Andrew got the win because from the front first impressions you know it's hard to kind of stand next to a guy of that stature who when they first come out looks like a statue but i definitely i definitely felt i gave him and um patrick johnson a run for their money so i was yeah. pretty proud of that because they're two very very good bodybuilders and they both made it to the olympia as well that year because patrick won the uh france a week later and then yeah. i won the uh tsunami cup in italy the week after so you know getting beat by people to get to the olympia you know you're what you know you're meant to be among them kind of people. So it was, it was a you're good right year for there. me last year. You're right there. That's why I think Arnold Classic, even though uh, yeah, Samson is doing it, and there is a rumor that yeah. Hardy might be. I think I've seen some of that, like just on um, some of the social media pages on Instagram. So I think it'd be good for Hardy to do because I think shows basically shows are better if more people do them and more good people because it's bodybuilding and you want to see the you want to see the creme de la creme turn up. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's never a bad thing if a, a champ turns up, I think. You know, like Samson, if he won the Olympia, like he said to you, um, if he won the Olympia, he would have still done the shows after. Yeah, 
he, and he told me this before, and I did, yeah. I couldn't say it to anybody, right? Yeah, you know, because that that was already a plan. Like, uh, and I, I told him like, oh well, just wait, and then, you know, if you win, you know, then you ask uh, uh, Jim Mannion what what he thinks, right? Mm. But uh, as soon we talked to to Tyler Mannion, and as soon as he mentioned. Great, <laughs> right? of course, man. If you can get the Mr. Yeah. Olympia or, or someone of that Arnold Classic champion doing that post Olympia shows, it's such a good thing for bodybuilding. And the European yeah. audience gets to finally see what a top, top tier bodybuilder looks like in the flesh because it doesn't yeah. really happen often these days. Yeah. No, it doesn't. The last time yeah. it's happened was Ronnie Coleman and Gunter, right? Well, they did a little bit with Phil, they did the Sheru, you know, for a couple of years, which had yeah. some really good names, but. Deep Europe, you know, Prague and whatnot, I don't think had... This. It, Prague always had a little bit of a pull because it used to have really good prize money. Um, there was a year that it was 40,000 and you had like Rody Winkler do it. So it was a good draw. But typically, obviously, most shows are just 10,000. So to get them to go over there is kind of like difficult. But Samson's such a pure blood when it comes to bodybuilding that being a champ over money or over anything is the reason for him to do it and to connect with his audience. And that's why... I think when the time comes when he does win the Olympia, because I think he will, he'll be such a good Mr. Olympia because his intentions are so pure. Yeah. 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 Uh, For sure. I mean, Definitely. Well, they say back in the 90s, if you guys probably remember some. Do the whole tour. Top, top, ten, top 10 Olympia, right? Pretty much they, they were going to European Grand Prix Tour. Yeah. And then of course, I'm, I was bummed because then I go to European tour and uh, I can maybe place fifth, mm. sixth. Uh, that's as high as I can go because everybody's going to be there. But it was like almost mandatory, you know. Yeah. And promoters back in the day, they would pay for like a ten guys, yeah, you know, to to fly and hotel and everything else. So you have no reason not to go. But also, Milos, those must have been some of the fun times for the Americans to see some different cultures because they're so used to being in America. Yeah, I reckon it was nice for them to just you know not maybe not everyone because they're deep in their diet and they don't really want to but i think that's a great opportunity for people just to see the world in general like i know for me i've seen places on the planet because of bodybuilding i'm grateful for seeing them um you know if i get to go to brazil i would have never been there without bodybuilding japan i went to because i did sign up for the japan pro but then my mum passed away but i still went there and had like a holiday so i was thankful for that you know prague uh, Romania, these are all countries that I would never have seen unless there was a bodybuilding show there. So I think we're all kind of grateful for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I tell you, back in uh, like 91, 92, 93, the European Grand Prix tours were like every Saturday is the show. So you, yeah. you actually stay in Europe. So we were traveling together, staying together. So you're in Finland and then you go to Italy and then you go to Spain for a week. That was beautiful, man. I can imagine that was probably some of the best times. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. I grew up as a fan in the '90s of bodybuilding, so I I wasn't living the bodybuilding life yet, but I was buying every magazine, watching all you guys, seeing everybody on stage, and yeah, that's great. Love that. It's uh, it's, it's good to you know. It's good to come away from having a podcast like this where we're highlighting the good, because there's so many um podcasts now that we spend most of our time talking about everything that we think is wrong with bodybuilding. So that's why Milos is always great to talk to because Milos, you always, you see the good in bodybuilding and then you make us see the good as well. So I've had a good time today, actually. It's been good. Yeah. You know, what's funny you say that we'll end on that too is Milos. James is right. You're one of the very few um, bodybuilders successful back in the nineties that are a true fan of it. They're still in the spotlight They're You're very encouraging to other competitors because there's a lot of older guys that kind of are more negative and kind of shit on the current competitors. Um, but I mean, like, Jose Raymond's another one. Like, Jose is always encouraging people, you know, like, who are coming up or amateurs. He's a fan of it. He's actually coming to stay with me next week on Wednesday because he's got clients coming, so it'll be a fun time. But be it's, careful, uh, he's 15% gay. <laughs> <laughs> not as much as Ian. Don't worry. He's all right. He'll be safe. It's not 40%. Yeah. But yeah, James is right about that, Milos, for sure. Yeah, but but you know, in general, you can spread the love or hate, yeah, yeah. Uh, envy or you know, support. I mean, shit. If you are grouped together, I, I mean, I love everybody involved in sport. You know, when you say brotherhood of iron, that's what I mean. I mean, yeah. I would help anybody, you know, of course, for sure, and then encourage. And that, that's what I'm seeing. I, I see that crazy potential in James. Right? It's just like, okay, what can we do to push 
you know, a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Uh, that's all there is to it. But it, it has to come first from within, right? For sure. Yeah. So. It does. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's let's bring Jordan next uh, next time with. Uh, I'll speak to Jordan and yeah. uh, see what he we can do. Let me know. Yeah, for sure. I'll make it happen. It'd be great. Guys, James, pleasure. I appreciate it, dude. Um, we're, I'm going to talk to you soon about arranging when best time to come visit in uh, spring. Sure. But uh, for sure. Right. Awesome. <laughs> All right, All right guys. guys. I'll catch you guys later. Hey, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you want us to continue to make great content, please hit the like button below and also subscribe. And did you also know we have an official website, ifbama.org, where you can check out a lot of all these episodes with deleted scenes, especially ones we cannot show on YouTube or any other platform. Comment below if you have any questions or suggestions on how to make this show better. Please, we would love to hear your feedback. Thanks again for watching IFBB AMA podcast. We will see you guys next time.